Over the last few videos, we've been developing this WKB approximation, and we passively mentioned that uh, this method was valid for what we refer to as a slowly varying potential. But we never really quantified what we meant by slowly varying, specifically slowly varying with respect to what quantity. That will be the topic of this video. Uh, we're going to develop a more accurate definition of what we mean by slowly varying. So as a brief review, recall that to develop the WKB solutions to the time independent Schrodinger equation, we guessed a trial wave function of this form uh, where we had a complex exponential with this quantity as x and we developed sx in a power series of h bar keeping only uh, terms up to linear h bar that means that any term of h bar of order h bar square and higher was neglected or is approximately equal to zero and this led us to this uh, differential equation that we had to solve in place of the Schrodinger equation. For this equation to be satisfied, both terms have to be identically zero, which means that this quantity has to be equal to this quantity, and this quantity has to be equal to this one. Uh, we also introduced a, uh, a local De Broglie wavelength related to this local momentum over here, lambda db of x, uh, which is 2 pi h bar over our local momentum. This over here is uh, local. And to get to this equation, we had argued that uh, the second derivative of this quantity as x, we're only interested in magnitude, so we're going to deal with absolute values for now, was uh, very, very small. And this is what allowed us to develop sx into a power series, keeping only linear terms. For us, this uh, the only second derivative that we have over here is for uh, s naught of x. So what this means then is this term over here is considered much, much smaller than this one. Since both of these are equal and both of these are equal, this is equivalent to saying that h bar second derivative of s naught x is much, much smaller than any quantity in this first term. And we'll pick the square of the local momentum. Okay, and we said that for a slowly varying potential, we expected this condition to be satisfied because for a constant potential, this was equal to zero, the second derivative with respect to x of as x. Okay, we can massage this a little bit by noting that for this equation to be satisfied, uh, so we can call this equation star. Uh, we need the first derivative of S naught of X. Uh, again, we're only looking at uh, the absolute. Uh, this quantity has to be equal to uh, the absolute value of p of x. This is coming from equating these two sides. What that means then is if you look at the second derivative, uh, again, just dealing with absolute magnitudes. This is equal to the derivative of our local momentum with respect to x. Okay, so we can plug this back into here, into this inequality. 
and we get that h bar uh, rate of change of the local momentum with respect to x is much, much smaller than the square of the local momentum. We'll keep this as uh, absolute quantities. Okay, so we're already starting to get a, a measure of what we mean by slow, slowly varying. Uh, our initial hypothesis was for a slowly varying potential, uh, this second order derivative term has to be very small and carrying that argument through has gotten us to this inequality. We also have that the square of the local momentum is defined as this quantity. And if you differentiate both sides with respect to x, so differentiate both sides over here, uh, what you get by the chain rule Again, just looking at absolute quantities. This first term gives you the px dpx dx. And this over here, uh, the two on this side will cancel out with the two on this side. E is a constant, so you're only left with m dv dx. We can rewrite this a little bit in a more convenient form. This here is an E. You can say that the rate of change of the potential with respect to the position. This is equal to H bar M PX H bar still looking at absolute quantities, dpx dx. And uh, the reason for the, uh, adding this extra h bar is because this is uh, proportional to, up to a factor of two pi, to m lambda De Broglie, so our local De Broglie wavelength, h bar dpx dx. Okay, so we've related the change uh, of our potential with respect to the position. So we're starting to get a rate of change of potential and we've related it to the rate of change of a local momentum. This term over here is the same that we have uh, up here. So since this quantity has to be much, much smaller than the square of the local momentum, we get dv dx times the local De Broglie wavelength from this side, bring this over to that side. This has to be much, much smaller than uh, p squared. We'll add an extra factor of two over here because it's just an inequality. So if, if you divide by two, you still maintain the inequality. And we get uh, a term for the local kinetic energy. So this is one way of quantifying what we mean by a slowly varying potential. This uh, inequality says that the rate of change of the potential energy over the span of a local De Broglie wavelength uh, has to be much, much smaller than the local kinetic energy of the particle. Okay. So in other words, if you look over the span of a De Broglie wavelength, the, the variation, the potential must be much, much smaller than the kinetic energy in that region. Okay. So this is 
one way of quantifying what we mean by slowly varying potential. In the next video, we'll see that we can uh, rewrite this in terms of the, uh, the De Bois wavelength by itself. So what you'll see is that an equivalent way of saying this is that the De Bois wavelength also has to be slowly varying uh, across space. <laughs>